Have you ever played three ball? The goal is to pocket all three balls with as few shots as possible, including the break. In this video, I demonstrate different strategies for the break shot. I want to thank Richard Humphreys for suggesting I do this video and for recommending one of the break shot options. One approach is just to hit the break hard from the side or center and hope something goes. Obviously, this is not a very effective approach. The probability to make a ball is low, and you don't always get an easy shot after the break. Sometimes you will make a ball and get good shape for an easy runout, but more often than not, no balls will go and you won't know where things will end up. In this case, the best score you can get is a 4, assuming you have a shot after the break and don't miss any shots. Another option is to use a soft break and play for a post-break shot at the 1. You're unlikely to make a ball this way, but you give yourself a good chance for a runout for a score of 4. Here's another example. Another approach is to use power, breaking from the side, focusing on pocketing the 3 off 4 rails. If you back cut the 1, the 3 usually goes long, and you can sometimes scratch. And if you hit the 1 squarely, the 3 usually goes short. If you use just the right amount of slight back cut, you can make the 3. However, the two can sometimes get in the way. Sometimes you can get better results from the other side of the table, which is a good thing to check with all of the approaches. Another multiple rail option is to pocket the three in the side, but this is even tougher than the previous shot. In either case, the three ball direction is very sensitive to the angle of the hit. Another approach is to hit the two, trying to bank the three cross corner. It doesn't go on this table because I can't get quite enough throw and spin transfer from the 2 to the 3 to get enough angle. However, on a table with old and dirty balls, or with cushions that bank long, this might be a very easy and reliable approach. I can make it work on this table by adding chalk to the contact point between the 2 and 3. This increases the amount of throw and spin transfer, allowing the ball to bank longer to the pocket. But that's cheating. An advantage of the soft break approach, if it works in your table, is the balls stay close, usually resulting in a fairly easy runout for a score of 3. On this table, an option is to use more speed, attempting to bank the 3 twice across. A benefit of the extra speed is that the 2 also has a chance to bank to the upper corner. However, this approach is low percentage, since the twice across bank requires a near perfect hit. Another option is to hit the 1 at a slight angle to send the 3 off 2 rails to the opposite upper corner. And with the right speed, you can also leave an easy shot at the 1 or 2 for an easy score of 3. This approach might look easy, but it is tough to get the hit just right to pocket the 3. My favorite break strategy is to use soft speed with inside English just barely clipping the one ball. With the right hit, the three goes into the corner and the one and two come to rest in the middle of the table, usually for an easy run out. Also, the inside English kills and straightens the cue ball's motion to get a good shot after the break. Here, I hit the second shot well to get a score of two, which is awesome. If you use too much speed and or hit too much of the one, you can scratch like this. but with soft speed, the cue ball has time to curve forward to avoid the scratch. 
Sometimes you can make the two on the side in addition to the three in the corner. These are some examples that were close. If the two goes, you have an easy score of two, which again is awesome. If the two comes up short of the pocket, sometimes you can get lucky with a two for one second shot to get a score of two. Sometimes, even if the hit isn't perfect, you can still pocket the three in the corner off the two and leave an easy out. And even if you don't make the three or the two, you usually still get a very good chance for an easy score of four. With a little more speed, you can sometimes pocket the two in the upper corner. Even if you entirely miss the one, you still usually get a decent chance for a score of four. Notice in this case how the inside English helps you get shape on the one. So this break approach has very little downside risk. You almost always have a good shot at a score of four, and with a good hit, a three is very easy, and even a two is possible. You can't ask for much better than this. Actually, you can ask for better than a four, three, or two. You can ask to pocket all three balls in the break for a score of one. There is an approach to do this, but it is very aggressive with downside risks, and there's low percentage. You need to break from close to the side rail and thin the one with fast speed and a center ball hit. With just the right hit and conditions, you can make the three in the corner, the one on the side, and the two in the upper corner. Here are the best attempts I could achieve on this table. As with the earlier soft speed approach, the key is thinning the one the exact amount necessary to send the three to the corner. With faster speed, the one and two will go shorter. On this last attempt, I was able to pocket the two, but the one still went long. On a table that banks short, like most diamond tables, you have a better chance of pocketing all three balls for a score of one. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing all of the three ball break strategy options. The next time somebody challenges you to a friendly three ball gambling match or proposition, you should now be better prepared to teach them a lesson with some low scores. Good luck from Dr. Dave.